I have to admit that my two favorite cities in British Columbia are Vancouver and Victoria. I love Victoria. I love Vancouver Island. And I, I don't want to leave out the, uh, the, the wonderful people over around Kelowna and, and that, uh, that great area either. But Ken Sudhus from Victoria has come down here to tell us a little bit about Ken's mashed potato roll with pesto. Thanks, George. Okay. And you've met Kathy, and uh, you have all the stuff pre-measured. And by the way, once again, I urge you folks at home to, to realize that if you will pre-measure all of the, un the things that you're going to put into a dish, whatever that dish that is. That would be called mise en place. It would be called what? Mise en place, and that means everything in its place. That's what it would it's be called. It's a chef term. That would be called, <laughs> or it could be called everything in its place. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and it makes your cooking so much easier. It really does. It does. And you don't have to be stirring with one hand and wondering what, right. you know, what goes in next. It's all there in front of you. So, you know, take a tip and, and, and do that. It's easy. You can get the little dishes. They're everywhere, and you yep. can buy them up. Yeah. Okay, let's have, uh, let's have mashed potato roll with pesto. And this is the sort of recipe that is really great in the summertime because, you know, a lot of the recipes that we've seen so far today have been winter-based, you know, because winter is coming on. Potatoes are a really good winter food. But this is the sort of thing that you want to take to a summer potluck or take along on a picnic, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and although there's a recipe for it, it's one of those things that is not exacting. You don't have to do it with exactly this much or exactly that Free amount. Form. Yeah. It's a freeform thing. Yeah, and mashed potatoes are a very forgiving substance. You can do a lot of things to them and with them, and they'll still do what you want, even if you sort of stretch things a bit. I can imagine. I just I, my, my mind's going crazy with variations just looking at this. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and the thing is, I mean, I don't know about you, but I can't make a small amount of mashed potatoes. Well, who would want to? Exactly. <laughs> if you're going to peel and chop... Might as well go all, all That's out right. and you know, make a bunch. Yep. Um, so the recipe that I use, I put you know between five and eight pounds of potatoes. Oh wow. That's okay. a lot of peeling, yeah. but if yeah, you're using a good yeah. ergonomic peeler, that sort of thing, it's not going to make right. your hands tired and so on. But uh, when you're cooking them, you want to make sure that you chop them, you know, an even size so they cook properly and consistently. Um, and what I do with my mashed potatoes to make garlic mashed potatoes is I will take at least a whole head or maybe even two heads of garlic, depending oh. on how many uh, wow. potatoes I'm cooking. Break them up, peel them, and put the whole garlic cloves in with the potatoes in the water and boil them together. Yeah. They, I love that. They That's just, good. Yeah, they go to yeah. a great consistency. And then when you mash them, sweet. yeah, very, very sweet, good. and they just meld, and you don't taste garlic, you just sort of get a sense of it. But you mash it in right in with the potatoes. I mean, yes. they're, they're already soft. Yeah, that's yeah. nice. So they mash just as yeah. well as they Beautifully. Uh, and potatoes. so, um, you know, this particular recipe, um, Lisa. It's a pile of potatoes. Yes, yes indeed. <laughs> Imagine. The mound of spuds. <laughs> the mound of spuds, yeah. So, you know, you want to get your potatoes really well cooked, start mashing. Um, and what I've got here is um, you can put in, you know, as long as your spuds are good and hot, you can put in cold butter, but this is melted butter. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you throw that in there. Carefully measured, of course. Of course. Um, and cream cheese. Ooh. And again, you can use plain cream cheese. You can use seasoned cream cheese. Cream cheese is great in mashed potatoes. Yes. And the thing is, I mean, we're using a lot of dairy products in this recipe, but there are a lot of people who are lactose mm -hmm. uh, sensitive, mm -hmm. people who are vegan, don't eat dairy yep. products. You can use non-dairy products in this and still come up with a great finished product. So what would you use in, in place of the, the, the cream cheese if you um, had a vegan? Uh, soy, you can use soy yogurt, there's soy cream cheese, mm -hmm. um, okay. there are all sorts of uh, non-dairy cheeses out emu. there. Emu, isn't emu non-dairy uh, sour cream? I, think. I believe it Something is. Something like that. You know, more and more people in my family are, are going vegetarian. It, yes. it just... mm -hmm. Well, vegetarian is one thing, uh, but vegan is when there are no animal yeah. products at all. And, yeah. I got, I got and, one of those. And it can present a challenge when you're cooking, but it can also really get, make you really, really creative. Yeah. And so it opens with, up your culinary It products. sure does. Um, one of my favorite condiments, especially with mashed potatoes, is black pepper. Yep. Yep. Now That's the thing right. is, some people would want, want, maybe want to use white pepper instead, so that you don't get the black dots. Been there, done that. Yeah. <laughs> I like the black pepper. Yeah, and you know, yeah. so if you've got somebody in the group yeah. that's, that's going to say, "What are those dots?" Just use you know, white pepper. that's kind of one of those old European cooking things. Mm -hmm. It was like all you know, chefs said, yeah. "You must never use the black pepper in the potatoes." But you know what? It's absolutely fine, and I like yeah. the flavor much better too. Mm -hmm. And so you mash these really, really well okay. together. 
get them very well blended. You want a nice smooth consistency to your potatoes. That cream cheese just works real well in there. Yeah. Oh yeah, it goes in just great. And again, this is the sort of thing where you get a chance to really bond with your food. What you know? do we have here? Yeah. I'm not going to smell it for fear that it is cayenne. It's paprika. Okay. <laughs> I've already had enough uh, you can, you can take a sneak inhalation of that today. <laughs> so. Okay. And you're going to use basil pesto today. Yes, but there are variations on pesto. Um, you don't have to use the green uh, basil pesto. You can use sun-dried tomato pesto. There's all sorts Orange of variations. Red pepper. Any sort of really aromatic um, sauce that has a you know a, a good consistency to it. Not, mm -hmm. not anything that's going to be too runny. Right. Or probably you don't want anything that's too chunky either because your potatoes are going right. to be too hard to slice. Mm -hmm. Right. So anything that's nice. Ooh, you know be really fun in this? Wow. Tapenade. Olive mm. tapenade. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 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 She gets Write ideas from doing these Write programs. Write that one down. Yeah. Then she runs home and puts them into the website. <laughs> <laughs> it's, so I just I thought of this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think we're just about you okay. know, mashed okay. out here. So the thing is, you want to take a cookie sheet, you know, something with an edge to it or a large tray, something mm -hmm. that's uh, a good size. Line it with wax paper so you've got... Uh, you know, some edge hanging over both ends. And that's so it'll be easy to roll, right? That's right. Okay. Because essentially what we're making is a jelly roll. Okay. So you oh, okay. Yeah, sure. So you take your spuds and... Paper down. Oh, it'll, it'll squish okay. into place. Uh, that's kind of a heavy bowl of potatoes there. <laughs> Oh, we all love potatoes. Yes, that's right. right. And that's I didn't right. get to be the size I am eating lettuce leaves and <laughs> melba toast, let me tell you. So. You know, there's nothing worse that, you know, if, you know, you're having a big family meal and, you know, you're having turkey or mm -hmm. prime rib or something like that, or any kind of dinner, and there's not enough. And, and, and these people who make two cups of mashed potatoes for, like, you yeah. know, party of, of 12, it's like, okay, what were they thinking? That's right. Obviously, they weren't. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But you know that that that, that brings up a, a good point. I've I've made big meals for like twenty right. people, uh, with a whole lot of side dishes, uh, oysters and, and the whole nine yards, dressing and all that. And the the, the one thing that goes first is the mashed potatoes, That's right. and it doesn't make any difference how much you make. If you've got a good gravy to go on them, they're they're gone. You know, I did a recipe uh, in my column one time for mashed potatoes, confetti mashed potatoes, that serves thirty six. That's so. <laughs> You take 100 pounds of potatoes Just about. And, um, yeah. and have your servants peel them for you. Yes. People email me all the time. Do you have that recipe? Can you send me that recipe? It's so fun. So you get these all nice and worked in. You can use a spatula or at home. Um, when I'm not on television, I'll be uh, using my hands sure, to press it out. Yep. Absolutely. And so then what you want to do is just take the pesto and. Now that pesto has got quite a bit of moisture in it, doesn't it? That's olive oil, yeah. And oh, that's, okay. uh, you know, that'll, uh, that's one of the joys of this recipe, actually, is that uh, potatoes are quite absorbent. Mm -hmm. And um, when you're making this recipe, you want to make it yesterday. Ah, Leave yes. it overnight mm -hmm. yes. in the fridge, and the uh, garlic and all the seasonings in here will bloom and really add a wonderful essence. Melt in. Yeah. And um, also it gives the uh, pesto a chance to work a little bit and the oil will actually work through the potatoes. And you can mm -hmm. certainly make pesto. There's great pestos oh, out yeah. there now that you can buy. Yeah. This was prepackaged. It's uh -huh. one of the few things I was allowed to bring across the border, actually. <laughs> but uh, those customs people are so weird about ag agricultural products, let me tell you. <laughs> There's lots of, lots of great ones out there. Um, yeah, and, and more and more, it seems yeah. like. SIBO, a local company here, makes a bunch of different flavored ones that are really delicious. Mm. Boy, that's, and that's, that's, how much pesto is that? Um, this is about, um, now I'm thinking metric here, this is about 350 mils, so it's oh, going to okay. be about, about, about 12 ounces, a cup and a half. <laughs> Sorry, we do things metric in Canada. Eh? I, I know. I, I, I think somehow we got to catch up on that. I know. <laughs> And so, so you've left a, that's that's a good point here. Yes, yeah, so you just want, you want to leave that. about, you know, an inch, an inch and a half, free space at the end, unpested. For your seal. For the seal, yes. All right. 
And I wouldn't have thought of that. Yeah. So then, using the wax paper, you just fold the spuds over themselves. Mm -hmm. Pressing and, down a smidgy bit. Yeah, you push down just a little bit to make That's sure a you technical have a decent term. Uh, smidgy bit. Smidgy yes. bit. Actually, a friend from New Zealand was uh, just visiting Victoria, and she picked up some measuring spoons that were a real hit. They yes. Were, they were marked a smidgen, a pinch, and a dash. Yes. <laughs> I have a pair of them. <laughs> and that would fill a lot of recipes. You know? So here we've got... Oh, wow. Know, look, at that. look at that. Yeah. So you sort of roll it on itself. And the fun part, of course, is transferring this onto a platter. Right. Because then you want to put it in the fridge. Okay. Let it set overnight. You know, the ends may crack a little bit or pop out. Mm -hmm. you just, you know, press them in. Do you want that to get nice and chilled? The butter will help chill it, Everything, the cream cheese, yeah, too. Yeah, it will also help bind and uh, make it into you a know, nice... Wouldn't that be beautiful with wonderful grilled flank steak, slices of wonderful grilled yeah. flank steak, fresh tomatoes. And All right, now... Serve cold, and... We have a finished one here. Yes. It's ah. really beautiful. Now, this one's a little smaller than that, but... <laughs> you want to try a little... Oh, go ahead. Oh, okay. I was going to hold out a spoon for myself. Mm -hmm. mm, that is good. Mm -hmm. On a picnic, you bet. That is in delicious. And it's, mm -hmm. it's easily portable. Um, and uh, in a second. Actually, somebody uh, just mentioned that it, they tried it uh, recently grilled. Grill. Oh yeah, that would be, oh, yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, just, yeah, just yeah. under the broiler for a couple of minutes, and uh, they were very happy with it. Excellent, excellent. That is really good.